back in the U.S., an important shift is happening in the push to impeach President Trump. The investigation is wrapping up and the prosecution is beginning. At any moment, members of the House Intelligence Committee will get their first look at the report on the investigation into the president's conduct with Ukraine. Just a short time ago, Republicans released their own report, claiming the Democrats never proved bribery or extortion by President Trump. And then on Wednesday... The House Judiciary Committee begins work towards drafting articles of impeachment. Judiciary Chair Jerry Nadler has invited the White House to take part in Wednesday's hearing when four law professors will testify about the constitutional grounds for impeachment. But the president's lawyers say they will not attend. And President Trump says the timing of all this is designed specifically to embarrass him. All you have to do is look at the words of the Ukrainian president that he just issued, and you know it's a hoax. The words President Trump is talking about there come from an interview Ukraine's president gave to Time magazine. He said, quote, I never talked to the president from the position of a quid pro quo. That's not my thing. I don't want us to look like beggars, but you have to understand we're at war. If you're our strategic partner, then you can't go blocking anything for us. I think that's just about fairness. It's not about a quid pro quo. It just goes without saying. With the process of impeachment moving to the next phase, we thought it would be a good time to look back into the past in an effort to understand the future. So I took a trip into the archives, which I always enjoy, to examine the history of impeachment. There are words you've heard a lot about recently, articles of impeachment, an investigation in the House that can lead to a trial in the Senate. As the fate of the Trump presidency is debated in Congress, let's take a walk through the history of impeachment. The first impeachment trial took place all the way back in 1868 and involved this man, Andrew Johnson. The 17th president was a Democrat and took over from Abraham Lincoln as president in 1865. He was impeached after dismissing Secretary of War Edwin Stanton. Congress had passed a law barring the president from firing cabinet officials. He was impeached by the House of Representatives but acquitted in the Senate by just one vote. He went on to serve the remainder of his term but didn't run for re-election. Just over a century later, it was this man's turn. But it's worth remembering that although the term impeachment is mentioned in the same breath as Richard Nixon, he was never actually impeached. Before the House of Representatives was able to conduct a vote on whether or not to impeach him, he resigned. Our entire focus should be on the great issues of peace abroad and prosperity without inflation at home. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Nixon faced possible impeachment on the grounds of obstruction of justice, abuse of power and contempt of Congress in relation to the Watergate scandal. While Nixon was never impeached, Bill Clinton was. It came about after a four-year investigation by Kenneth Starr that began with a look into possible financial crimes and finished with a 445-page report that included details of President Clinton's relationship with an intern, Monica Lewinsky. The House of Representatives impeached him in 1998 with charges of perjury and obstruction of justice, but he was acquitted in the Senate and served out his term of office. So three presidents, two impeachments, and as of yet, zero convictions. As things stand with a Republican majority in the Senate, this case looks set to follow a similar pattern. And CNN will have special coverage of the impeachment proceedings all week. On Wednesday, we will bring you all the latest news and expert analysis as the House Judiciary Committee moves to start drafting articles of impeachment.